What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of the motherfucking NFL show. Let's go ahead and get right into this, though, especially since it's the holiday season and your boy is pretty much ready to, uh, he's already in celebration mode, so let's just run through this real fast. <clears throat> um, the Saints blew out the Colts. I mean, <laughs> oh, the Colts have nothing this year. They're, they are building for next year. Andrew Luck retired in the preseason and it threw him off so this year being at six and eight they actually did better i thought they'd only get like one win this year uh don't worry colts fans i'm not laughing at you it's just wow that's one hell of a beating in eli's eli manning's final game at madlife stadium the Giants beat the Dolphins 36-20 to despite the fact that Eli threw two touchdowns and three interceptions. <laughs> and, he, and he got a standing ovation. That is typical Giants fans just paying respects to a guy who's clearly washed up. Uh, but nonetheless, great win over a 3-11 team. Well, technically, that win actually made you tied with them, so... Congratulations, you beat a team that was one win better than you this year. Uh, until that game. Uh, okay, uh, Seahawks and Panthers. Let's see, Seahawks won 30-24. Kyle Allen uh, threw three interceptions and only one touchdown. Eli can at least say that he threw one more touchdown than Kyle Allen. Uh, but other than that, goodness gracious. Um, Panthers look like shit. They scored two touchdowns at the end of the game, but it wasn't enough. The Seahawks did just enough to hold on and only lost three games this year. Panthers, you're not going to the playoffs. You're going to join the Colts, the Dolphins, and the Giants, and a bunch of other teams we're going to get to. Like, for example, the Washington Redskins are definitely not going to the playoffs. They just got kicked in the face 37-27. It wasn't a total beating. It was only down by 10. If anything, though, this says more about how bad the Eagles are than how bad the Redskins are. Because the Redskins are already terrible, but the fact that the Eagles struggled to beat them says a lot. In the playoffs, if they make it <clears throat> over Dallas, they're going to be one and done in the first round. You can bank on that. Chiefs, Broncos, oh boy. Broncos are not going to the playoffs. Definitely not going without uh, uh, losing Joe Flacco, losing Brandon Allen. And then they have this rookie, Drew Locke, in there who did okay in a snow game. It was a, I believe that was like the most snow on a football field we've had this year there in uh, Kansas City. Even more than Foxborough. But uh, the Chiefs dominated at home. No shocker there. They're going to be fine in the playoffs. Broncos are going to be fine sitting at home watching the Chiefs in the playoffs. And speaking of teams that might be sitting at home, ooh, the Texans beat the Titans in their first matchup, first of two. They face each other not next, not this week coming up, but week 17, the final week of the season. Uh, but the Texans won this round. The Titans with that loss, it does not help their playoff chances. They are still alive in the wild card hunt but in the AFC, but uh, that loss does not help them. Uh, the Bengals, of course, got kicked in the face by the Patriots, 34-13, and that's mainly because the Patriots got caught taping the Bengals' sidelines the week before, and then the, the, the team's videographer lied about it and was caught on camera lying about it. So the Patriots essentially cheated to win here against a team that they didn't even cheat to win against because the Bengals have only won one game all year. <laughs> and the Patriots had to actually cheat to beat them. It, it says a lot. Probably the most fraudulent 11 and 3 team in the in in the NFL right now, but you know, playoff time will expose that. Expose that. And from there, we move on to Detroit, where the Lions lose to the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers beat the, the hell out of them. And Jason Winston threw his. I mean, Jameis Winston threw his one interception a game, like he always does. But he threw four touchdowns, so he did well. Uh, the Lions are pretty much cooked this year. I mean, they were done many weeks back, but I mean, three ten and one says it all. They're not going anywhere. Buccaneers, by the way, are also mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, even with that big win. They're mathematically eliminated because they've lost too many, too many close games. And plus, in their division, they're not like they're okay at seven to seven, but they're not going anywhere. Mathematically, they can't go anywhere. A lot of a lot of teams would have to lose, and unfortunately, those teams are teams that are not going to lose. <laughs> so they're they're pretty much cooked. 
uh, the Bears are also cooked. They nearly beat the Packers with a Hail Mary with like, well, it was, yeah, it was like a Hail Mary in the form of like three to four laterals and, um, it was more of like a rugby style play where people were getting tackled and the ball was being tossed in the air and they were like, get it to the end zone. We have no time left. Get there now so we can get this touchdown. But the Bears came within a yard, one yard of making it a 20 to 21 game and could have either tied it with an extra point or gone for the win with the two pointer, but fall one yard short. And just like their season, they're going to fall one yard, one yard short of the playoffs. A shame, considering last year, their kicker was what did them in in the end. This year, it was everything around that that did them in in the end. The Bears, not going anywhere. The Packers are fine, of course. They they struggle, but the thing is, they're struggling, though. Even though the Packers are struggling, they're, they're winning. So that's still good. But a little concerning that they only beat them by eight. I thought they were skull dragon. Speaking of skull dragons, the Vikings got it done, though. They would won 39-10. They're only one game back of the Packers. Both teams are going to be in the playoffs, no question. But <clears throat> big news out of this is um, Dalvin Cook, the running back for the Vikings, is going to be out uh, for the next two weeks with a shoulder injury, which is, I mean, it's, it doesn't really affect them much. But considering he's the reason they're in the playoffs, if he's injured and he, they play him injured in the playoffs, not good. For them, it's not good. Uh, let's see, the Jaguars and Raiders, oh yeah, <laughs> the last game in Oakland, oh shit, they lose by four after blowing, uh, I think it was like a 10 or 13 point lead, I could be wrong, I think it was a 13 point lead actually, could be wrong on that, but they blew a lead where they actually were leading at halftime, um, oh yep, it was a 16-3 lead, <laughs> now that I see it, um, yeah, they had a 16-3 lead going into halftime. And the third and fourth quarter, they did nothing. They couldn't move the ball. They couldn't defend. They they did nothing. The third quarter, they held no field goal. Thank goodness Jacksonville's not that good. You see that 5-9 and nine record? They're certainly cooked. By the way, they just fired their general manager, Tom Coughlin. They fired his old ass. Which is funny because I thought they would fire the coach first, but I guess uh, the Khan family's like, "All right, I'm done with this old motherfucker. We need some young. We we need like a young general manager that knows analytics to come in here and do this and, and figure this team out." But nonetheless, Tom Coughlin fired because of that, even though they won, <laughs> even though they won. And by the way, Raiders fans, I love the way you celebrate at the end. You booed Derek Carr off the field, which is what you need to do considering the terrible season he had. And they littered the field with trash. One fan actually kicked out one of the seats in the stadium, ripped it off the ground, and then walked out of the stadium with it. <laughs> oh, that's that's typical Oakland Raiders right there, man. You guys don't give a fuck. It's, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how you all are going to do in Vegas, because apparently Vegas is not too far away from Cali. I'm an East Coast boy, so I don't really know. But... One thing I can tell you is that uh, I hear that, hey, those Raider fans are willing to travel, and if they go to Vegas, that's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, they're going to scare the shit out of all those tourists. It's going to be great. Uh, let's see. The Browns and the Cardinals. Damn. Cardinals kicked the Browns in the face, and actually, I picked this one, too. Uh, I, I'm so happy I was right about this all year. I mean, the Browns are 6-8, and eight, but let's be real. They're not going to the playoffs this year. They're already out of it. The Ravens have ran away with the division, so they're not going to take that. Uh, the Steelers are out. The Browns need, I think, like five or six different teams to win. They need like a couple to lose, and they need to win next week's game. And they play the Ravens, and I don't believe they're going to win that. So we can pretty much say that the Browns are cooked, and the Cardinals are definitely cooked. Uh, but the only good thing about the Cardinals is that they were a rebuild team this year with a brand new quarterback. And uh, Larry Fitzgerald's probably going to be gone uh, within another year or two as well. So they are more on the rebuilding side, especially with a new coach. So I'm not worried about the Cardinals next year. Uh, they'll have a lot better luck. But this year, yeah, they were just trying to get things on track. And I'll tell you what, they're further along the track than uh, the Browns will ever be. And moving on from there, we have the 49ers and the Falcons. And the Falcons won. Surprisingly, they won 29-22. I don't get 
how the 49ers let this happen. I tell you what, the 49ers look dominant first half of the year and last half they sort of shuffled along. I mean, they're going to the playoffs. They're 11 and three, running away with their division, but that's not good. That is not good to lose to the Falcons like that in your own house, in front of your own fans like that. That's not good. Jimmy Garoppolo had good numbers too. That's a real shame. And that defense just, ugh, just did him no favors. Unfortunately, though, that touchdown at the end by Julio Jones, I don't know if he really got that. I think that was a, a bit of a gift call right there. But even so, the game should not have been close. It should have been like 40. It should have been at least 49, 49 to 14. 49ers like they should have been able to skull drag him but that didn't happen and then the Cowboys beat up on the Rams <laughs> Cowboys needed this in the worst way uh 44-21 they take it at home they're 7-7 seven seven, tied with the Eagles that's probably the most deadlocked division right now the NFC East so the Cowboys are still in it uh the Rams are still in it but uh if the Rams lose I believe this Saturday yeah, they're going to give a little bit of leeway for the Vikings to make their claim as a top wild card. But nonetheless, that wasn't a good one for the Rams. The Rams really needed that win. And after they started off pretty hot earlier in the year, they've been shuffling along too. That's another team that's been uh, barely getting by. Even with, the, even with getting rid of Marcus Peters and picking up Jalen Ramsey, it cost them in the very end. And let's move on to the Sunday night game where the Bills beat the Steelers 17-10 in a close one. Duck Hodges threw four interceptions. Look at that, folks. Four picks. Ugh. I mean, I know Mason Rudolph was terrible, but goodness, this guy is this guy's killing you too, Mike Tomlin. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're going to do. That's, that's a team that's definitely not going anywhere. Steelers are finished, even with the 8-6 record. They don't have a quarterback. Uh, they don't have a, a solid offense because of injuries. And uh, the defense has done no favors for them, even with the pickup of people like Minka Fitzpatrick. It's just he's played well, but the rest of the defense hasn't played too well. And, of course, in the Thursday night game of the week, the Ravens kicked the Jets in the face like I knew they would, 42-21. Lamar Jackson threw five touchdowns and ran for almost 100. He pretty much, yeah, like, look at this. The guy runs a lot, but he threw five touchdowns. And the only thing is it's against the Jets, so it doesn't look that impressive. But still, it's impressive to throw five touchdowns when you're known for running. But then again, when you're playing a team like the Jets, it's easy to do. But nonetheless, all you can do is play the people in front of you. And we move on to week 16. Let's do a little preview. Because look at this. No Thursday night games this week, but we have Saturday and Sunday. Three games Saturday, rest of the games are Sunday. Our first game Saturday is Texans Buccaneers at 1 p.m. Wow. Oh boy. I I would say go for the Texans here, nine and five. Buccaneers seven and seven. All they have to play for is pride, and if you compare the two teams, the Texans are better. Patriots Bills four o'clock. This will be the best game of the day. Out of these three, like, the, the night game I'll get to in a second. That's good, but this will be the best one. Because Tom Brady and the Patriots need a win, especially after being embarrassed. Well, not being embarrassed, but especially after the embarrassing reveal of the uh, of the videotape in terms of them cheating again. So, Spygate, I think this is like part two, part three. Yeah, the Patriots are going to have to prove they can actually win without cheating for once. And the Bills are going to have to continue their hot streak. And if they win, if they win, they will essentially have the same record as the Patriots. And they'll be neck and neck for that division. So we'll see. That is, that's critical. The Bills cannot lose. If they lose, they lose traction. The Patriots, the Patriots need this win just to establish themselves. It is starting to get to that time of the year where the Patriots, you know, they get serious because it's near playoff time. So we may see a new team here. Or we might see the emergence of a, a new leader in that AFC division. And then, let's see, moving on to the night game, the Rams and 49ers. I would, by the way, first game pick the Texans. Second game, I would say, I'm going to say pick the Bills because they're the hotter team right now. They're, they're the better team, at least at the moment. Even though it is Brady, 
and it is December. You know, gut will tell you the Patriots, but I don't know if I trust that defense. I think the Bills' offense will be able to overpower the Patriots' defense, and Brady will just have to make do with what he has. We might see a change in the guard there, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Bills. If I'm wrong, I won't be surprised, but I'll be surprised if I'm actually right on that one. Rams 49ers. I'll go 49ers here. But thing thing about this one is, uh, I think if the Rams lose, and the Vikings are in, or the Rams, something like that, the Vikings are definitely affected by that game. So Viking fans will want to watch that one at night. I think the 49ers will take it though, because they have the better team at the moment. Moving on to Sunday, Jaguars Falcons. Oh, meaningless game with two teams that have terrible records. Eh, flip a coin, pick one. I'm gonna say go with the Falcons though, because. The Falcons did beat the 49ers, so maybe they carry that momentum and defeat the Jaguars. And the Jaguars can fire more people, including their head coach, even though I like Doug Marone. Uh, let's see, Redskins-Giants. Oh, gosh. They're both 3-11, and 11, and they're both god-awful. This is in D.C., but it really doesn't matter because the Redskins, like, opponents, they're... Like, whenever the Redskins play at home... The opposing team's fans always outnumber the home fans. Like, that's that's how bad the franchise is. Uh, if Eli Manning's playing, then go ahead and give it to the better quarterback in Eli. So pick the Giants there. Steelers-Jets. Oh, that's a god-awful game. Uh, pick the Steelers. They have the better record. Uh, Saints-Titans has a lot of meaning to it. If the Titans lose this, they are pretty much cooked in terms of their playoff hopes. But... Uh, but if, sorry about that, if the Saints, well, I mean, if the Titans win, they further their chances of getting a wild card. So I would say go ahead and pick the Saints here because record-wise they're the better team. The only thing about the Titans is the Titans are at home. You know what? Actually, you know what? Since the Titans are at home, I'm going to go ahead and pick the upset Titans over Saints. I'm probably wrong in that one because the Saints are really, really good. But the Titans need this in the worst way, and I think they're going to come out motivated and, and looking for blood. Especially since they're going to be playing at home, too. I think the hometown crowd will work to their advantage. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow. This should have been the glorious like tank bowl. This should have been the glorious uh, game for the number one overall pick. But it's safe to say the Bengals are going to pick number one in the draft this year. And they're going to pick Joe Burrow, the quarterback from LSU. Uh, but that's pretty obvious, especially since they don't have a quarterback of their own. I would say, just for the sake of draft positioning, I would say pick the Dolphins. Because if the Bengals were to get a win here, even though there aren't any teams in the NFL with two wins, and they essentially are... They have a two-game lead of all the other terrible teams in the NFL. If they were to win here, they sabotage their chances of picking number one. So, I expect the Bengals to take a dive. Let the Dolphins beat them at home. Take the Dolphins there. Ravens, Browns. Oh, Ravens are going to beat their fucking ass. <clears throat> Baker Mayfield has not lived up to expectations. 12, 17 touchdowns, 17 picks. Uh, Nick Chubb is the best running back in the league, though. And the Dolphins, I mean, the Browns defense, they do... All right against the pass, but they cannot stop the run. The Ravens, uh, mainly their best weapon is running. <clears throat> they do know how to pass, and they do pass when they need to, but for the most part, this is a running football team, so go with the running football team. Even though, even though they aren't in Cleveland, I would say go with the Ravens, go with the better offensive team, because the Browns, ugh, Browns are not going to the playoffs. The Browns need to fire their head coach. Yeah. Trust me, the Browns have the roster to win, like win championships and go to like win conference championships and go to playoffs and whatnot. Maybe play in a Super Bowl, not win, obviously, but play in it. But the problem is they don't have the right head coach, and they also don't have the right general manager because Jimmy Haslam is god awful. So the Browns really need to construct from the bottom up before they do anything. So pick the Ravens there. I would say, let's see, one o'clock, Panthers, Colts. Oh. Five and nine versus six and eight. Both teams uh, came off embarrassing losses. Colts probably the more embarrassing of the two. I'm gonna say go for the Panthers here, man. Go go ahead for the Panthers. Even though the Colts are at home, and both these teams suck. Actually, you know what? Go for the Colts. They're at home. Usually the Colts at home are all right. 
And I think that rookie is, uh, I think that rookie's finally been exposed. Kyle Allen of the Panthers? Ugh, I'll tell you what. If the Panthers get rid of Cam Newton, they're probably going to regret that. <laughs> Considering how Kyle Allen's played lately, because he's been looking like shit. But anyways, moving on to the floor, 4 o'clock games. You have the Raiders and Chargers. I mean, Raiders, let's be real here. I don't know if you're going to go to the playoffs this year. I, I really don't. But I'm going to pick you to win. Because you're on the road. You're in L.A. You're pissed off. Your fans are pissed off. Um, so I think you're going to go in there. You're going to play like you smell blood in the water. And you're going to destroy what's left of Phillip Rivers. Who, by the way, will not be on the Chargers at the end of this year. I don't even think the head coach of the Chargers, Anthony Lynn, will be there. Rivers, though, definitely gone. Be on the lookout for that head coach, though. Anthony Lynn. Uh, let's see. For a five, we have Lions and Broncos. Another meaningless game with two terrible teams. I will say go for the rookie Drew Locke and the Pan and the ah not the Panthers the Broncos. Uh, because Drew Locke has looked really good. He played in a snow game like a complete whiteout snow game last week uh, in Kansas City. So it was obvious he was going to play like trash. Um, but this time he's going to be at home in Denver. They're going to destroy the Lions. Or at least what's left of them. Let's see. 430 Cowboys Eagles. Oh, this is this is for whew, this is for everything in the NFC East. Oh. On paper, the Cowboys have the better team. The Eagles are injured. The Eagles need to fire their head coach. And quite frankly, that team misses Nick Foles a lot more than Nick Foles misses them. So I'm gonna pick with the team that's not wounded. And who has the better quarterback, as well as the better running back, and the better offense, period. And that's the Dallas Cowboys. Pick the Cowboys in that one. Cardinals, Seahawks. Oh, the, the <laughs> Seahawks are going to kick the Cardinals in the face. And Cardinals, don't feel bad. It's in Seattle. Only thing about the Cowboys game, by the way, that's going to be in Philly. So, when the Cowboys kick the Eagles in the face, those fans are probably going to fucking riot. Just like the Raiders did when they lost. Um. Anyways, back to the Seahawks-Cardinals game, though. Uh, even though they're in Seattle, I'm sorry Cardinals, but I think you're going to get destroyed here. I think they'll put up a valiant effort because Kyler Murray is a good quarter quarterback. And with that team, with in Kenyon Drake breaking out last week and Fitzgerald having an all right season, um, I think they have enough pieces on offense to where they can, they can do some damage. They just need to fix that defense up, really fix that defense up. Because right now it's not good. And then 8.30, Chiefs and Bears. Ooh, the Chiefs. Oh, yeah, Chiefs have a lot more to gain from this game. The Bears have pretty much packed it in, and they're going to be like me in a couple of days. We're going to be on a tropical island celebrating. Only thing is they're going to be celebrating uh, not being in the playoffs. They just get an extended vacation before the offseason. <laughs> and then 8.15, Vikings and Packers in. Oh, by the way, that's going to be in Chicago. I would pick the Bears since it's in Chicago, but nah. The Chiefs are going to take it on the road. Packers and Vikings. Both of these teams need it bad. I would say the Vikings need it more. Only thing with Vi the Vikings are they don't have Dalvin Cook. And Dalvin Cook is injured. He's going to be out for the next couple weeks. Oh. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's tough because both teams are very good on the offensive side. Uh, pack, I mean, the Packers have struggled a little bit, though, with Aaron Rodgers. Just a little bit. Not enough, obviously. 24 touchdowns, 2 picks. Offense has shuffled along because some of the weapons are probably not top-notch for Aaron Rodgers. But nonetheless, the Packers are still very good. And right now, I would rather pick Aaron Rodgers over Kirk Cousins. So, pick the Packers over the Vikings, folks. I think the Packers are going to win that one. It's probably going to be one of the better games of the week, if it's not the Cowboys and Eagles. But no doubt about it, folks. We have a lot of good football this week. And by the way, remember, it starts Saturday. No more Thursday night games. All the Thursday night games finished last week with the Ravens and Jets. That was the final Thursday night game. We literally went 15 weeks with a Thursday night football game. And the very last Thursday night football game of 2019 of this decade ends up being a, a skull dragging. Even though the Ravens win by half, like, you know, by literally 21 points, they essentially dominated the whole game from start to finish. 
But nonetheless, one hell of a way to go out on for Thursday nights. But folks, that is it for this week. That is the recap and that is the preview. I hope to see you all next week after these games. And uh, since it's uh, since it's week number 16 and pretty much one regular season week to go, I am going to go ahead and do a special playoff preview edition next week for you guys. That way you can figure out if your team is essentially going to make it or if, unfortunately, they are going to break it, meaning they're going to break and going to have to rebuild for next year. But anyways, folks, enjoy all the games this weekend. I wish all your teams luck, and uh, let me know who you're rooting for this weekend. Until next time, it's your boy Jay Smooth. I'm out.